Cricket. We're out here in Dubai. Obviously, it's post-season. It was a pretty big summer for women's cricket. Just kind of give us your thoughts on where, like, women's cricket as a whole is. At the it's in an incredible place. Um, it's. I, I feel really cliche when I say this answer, but the whole summer was a massive highlight for us. Um, I think the 100, obviously, in particular, right in the epicentre of the summer was incredible. Um, the visibility that we had as female athletes, the fact that people came to watch us, the affiliations to the team, it was incredible. Um, but I think women's cricket is in a really healthy place and I don't like settling for things. So I think, you know, there's, there's still areas that we can improve on, but it's incredible to be a, a part of that and to kind of see the growth that we've had over the last five, ten years. So obviously you're out here with, in Dubai with Lanks at the minute, you've got a busy winter coming up with England, kind of just talk us through like the preparation, where you're off to and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so we've had a little bit of time off, which is unusual. Um, obviously over in here, Dubai still doing some preparation as well, still getting the opportunity to do some cricket and train. Um, but we've got a big winter block now, so we've got about 10 weeks where we'll be down in Loughborough every week training as a squad, and then we go over to the Ashes in early January. Uh, we've got obviously the test match, three T20s and three one-day games over there in that multi-format series. And then we go straight over to the World Cup in New Zealand. So it's going to be an incredible winter. We've got the World Cup, the one-day World Cup where we're reigning champs. You know, we want to defend that title. So we've got um, some pretty big months ahead of us cricket-wise. And obviously as an English cricketer, it doesn't get much bigger than an Ashes series in Australia, does it? Kind of how, how are you feeling ahead of that? Yeah, it's a tough series. It really is. I've been over there... I've, I've won an Ashes over there, which was one of my, still my career highlights, um, but that was a really tough fought series, and that's, you expect nothing left when, less when you go over and play in an Ashes series. Um, but then on the back of that as well, we've got a World Cup to think about as well, so in a way the Ashes is brilliant preparation for us because we're playing against one of the world's best teams, then preparing to go over and play in, in the New Zealand World Cup as well. So. Um, we know it's going to be a tough series, but it's also going to be equally a brilliant series, which as a cricketer, that's what you want to be doing. You want to be playing the hardest games against the hardest opponents. And as you mentioned, England brain and champs in the World Cup, obviously you missed out on that last time. What would it mean to you to, to kind of go over there and, and make it back to back titles? Yeah, that was, um, it was a really tough time in my career, actually missing out on that World Cup squad and then seeing your best mates and your teammates lift a, a trophy at Lords on home soil. It was, it was tough to watch. Equally, it was amazing to watch. Um, but I, I set myself a goal that day that I was going to be in the next World Cup squad. Um, obviously be in the team as well and help England win games of cricket. But yeah, it is, it, it's a dream. The Ashes is a dream for a young kid and so is a World Cup. Any ICC global tournament is what you want to be playing. And it's, again, it's that visibility for the women's game. Um, that We know the standard of the game is improving so much. So hopefully it will be a really great occasion. Um, but yeah, like I said, I set myself that goal four years ago now to be in the, the next squad and it's come around quite quickly. You mentioned the 100 earlier but you also got to play Thunder quite a bit this yeah. summer and I think the momentum of the 100 also kind of led to increased crowds with the Thunder towards the end of the season. Kind of How much did you enjoy getting out there and kind of getting involved in, in, in like the domestic side of the game? I love getting back to Emirates Old Trafford, love uh, getting the opportunity to come back and play for the Red Rose. Um, obviously it's a little bit different now with the regional structure with the North West Thunder. We've still got the Rose incorporated into that. Um, but honestly, that structure is so important for the women's game because we've now got five domestically contracted girls who are getting paid to play cricket and who are improving every day and getting the opportunity to go and train at Emirates Old Trafford weekly, which is just, you know, when I was, when I was 15, 16, I didn't get those opportunities. So it's incredible that these girls are getting that. Um, but for me to be able to come back and step away from international duty and come back and enjoy my cricket and play with my some of my best mates it's it's really good fun um, and we've got we've got a, a really good young team as well we've got some frustrations because we think we should be winning more games of cricket than we are at the minute but I think we forget how young we are and how much development we've got to go so it's a really exciting phase for women's cricket in the northwest and I guess with the domestic contracts England are already kind of seeing the fruits of that now with the likes of Emma Lamb she's performed well in like the Rachel Hale Flynn and she's gone on to make her England debut yeah incredible season for Emma because you can't score that many hundreds and get ignored and then she gets her opportunity to go and play in a, a first T20 match this summer which was incredible for Emma and incredible for the club as well because Emma's a homegrown talent she's come through the academy you know she's been um, I guess she's been a real face of Lancashire cricket as well so um, it's great that she got her rewards for that as well and she's a really hard worker and I think everyone at the club knows that as well and was really pleased to see her go and make her international debut and hopefully it's not her 
her last one, she'll be out there for a lot longer. And away from the players as well, we've really strengthened like the, the staff as well. We've got Paul Shaw, head coach, David Thorley, director of cricket. Can you really see that difference now and taking it to the next level with those around? Completely, yeah. The continuity that the girls have got now with the coaching. So like you said, we've got Paul Shaw, who's head coach. I think he signed a three-year deal as well. So we know we've got his efforts for a lot longer. Uh, Steve Parry's been in working with the spinners. He is an absolute bundle of energy, but he's brilliant. Um, he's got a wealth of knowledge and he's... Um, he's only recently retired as well, so he's still relevant in the game and he, he still understands the game. And he's played a lot of T20 cricket, which women's cricket is mostly based on. Um, and we's, we've also got Paul White as well, Chalky, who's been working with the... We've adopted two Yorkshire men, actually, so it's, it, it just goes to show the strength of the Red Rose at the minute. But, yeah, we've got Chalky working with us, working with the seamers and the all-rounders, and it's just... Honestly, it's paid dividends. The improvements that the girls have made in the winter, just from having a structure and having a winter training programme, it's just been absolutely incredible to see that development. Laura Jackson, probably the perfect example of that. Um, she was kind of on the fringe of playing in the team a couple of years ago, and now she's opening the bowling religiously. So it just goes to show how much that training is so important for the girls.